So now that our first test has run, let us go ahead and write our second test. So the second test we're going to write is run for checking for our string representation of our objects. So we currently have our database model right here, but we haven't yet written a string representation of all the objects that we shall create from this class. So the way we do that is by basically coming within our tests. Now I'm going to basically create this method. I'll just say def test and then let's say we're going to test for the string representation of objects. So I'll just say test string representation of objects and once you've done, done that it's going to take in self and once we have self then we're going to go ahead and basically check if these objects have a string representation or not. Now that we're going to do this is by basically coming right here so we're going to basically assert a name. What we shall do is to go Actually, we're going to use, we're going to call a set, but we're going to call it on ourself. So we're first going to create an object of type post. So the way we're going to do that is by basically coming and saying post. And this is going to be equal to posts dot objects dot create. And then we are going to create a sample post. So we have a title, of, let's say a test. So let's call this a test post. And then we shall also have our body, so I'm just going to come and say that our body is going to be equal to our test body. So we shall just come here and say that we shall have our test body. Now that you have our sample title and our test body, we're going to go ahead and basically test if our string representation of this object is going to be equal to the title of that specific post. So to do that, I'll just come and say self dot assert. And this will be a set equal then we shall check if the post title is equal to the string representation of that post now the way we return the string representation of the post is by basically converting our object into a string so we can just say string and then we pass in the object for which we want to return a string representation for which is going to be our post object and then on the right we are actually going to compare it with the title so we can just call the post dot title and that will basically be able to return for us uh, to basically compare these two and return if the test has passed or failed. Now I'm going to save and once I save I'll just basically come and run our test. So this is basically going to go ahead and run our test and now we see that our post object so this is basically the default way Django returns for us string representations of objects by saying post object and then specifying the ID of that object is not equal to our test post. So if we want to correct this then that means we have to go to our models with py and then define a dunder str method to return the string representation. So I'm going to remove this and then come right here. I'll define a dunder str method and this is actually going to be auto completed but I'll change it to basically return self dot title. So this is basically going to return the title of each post as a screen representation. So when you go ahead and run here, this is going to go ahead and run our tests. And now we see that our two tests have so far worked. So this is amazing. And this has helped us to basically write some very simple tests for our application. Now let us go ahead and try to basically populate our database with some entries. So to do that, I'm just going to come right within our admin. So the first thing we need to do is to actually add our post model onto our admin site. So as to allow us to basically interact with it using this admin dashboard. So to do that, we shall come back within our code and then within our posts app, we have our admin.py module. So within this admin.py module, we can be able to register our model onto our admin dashboard. So I'll begin by importing our model. So I'll just come and say from dot models, we are going to go ahead and import our post model. And once you've imported it, I'll just come and do a simple admin dot site. And in this case, we can say dot register. And we can also go ahead and maybe say that we want this to basically be registered on the admin dashboard so we shall add it and say it's going to register our posts so when you go back to our browser and refresh 
we can now see that our post is going to be added onto our admin dashboard so we see that you have our posts here so i'll just go ahead and say add so we're going to add some posts within our database now to save time i'm going to be using some lorem ipsum text to act as placeholders for our specific post bodies i'm going to go ahead and google uh, lorem ipsum and that will basically generate for us text that we shall use as our sample titles now thanks to code grepper i can easily get all what i need without having to search deeper i'm just simply going to come right here and then paste or copy what we have here as text and then i'll basically go in here and then paste it in here so i'll just come and post within the body the text that we have and then i give a title so let's say this is going to be four ways to test your Django applications so i'm just simply going to call this four ways to test your Django application i'll save and continue editing and then i'm going to write another i'm going to basically add so i'll just say add another and then I'm going to add another one in the title so let's say introduction to docker it's one of the videos i'll try to make so i'll just say intro to docker and once we have that then i also paste in the text and then save and add another now let's say also we need to say four ways to uh, test your so this is going to be test your react code and then we shall basically add some text in here so we're going to have this is the third test and then we shall also have another one so i basically go ahead and add and in here we're going to have our title so our title in this case is going to be let's say um why or oh, let's say uh five ways to improve the quality of your code so i'm basically going to just paste in some text in here and then i'll add the last one so i'm going to add the programmer's favorite which is basically how to make money so i'm just going to say 10 ways to make money as a programmer and once i've done that then i'll just basically paste in the code or the text in here and then i'll basically go ahead and save so by just doing that we've been able to populate our database with some posts so let us go ahead and try to test what our home page of our application would be like so i'm going to go within our vs code right here and the first thing i'll do is go to our test.py file right here now we've written some simple tests for our post model now let's go ahead and try to test our home page so i'm just going to come right here and say class and this is going to be our home page test so i'll just come and say home page and then say tests and once we have that it's going to start class or so inherit from test case and then we shall go ahead and basically <coughs> write this test so one thing, one important thing that you need to realize is this test case class inherits from the unit test class and the unit test test case class. And whatever you can be able to do in unit test, you can be able to do within our test case class. Stuff like creating a uh, setup and tear down classes can also be done within our test case classes. So the first thing we need to do is to go ahead and basically set up this test. So to be able to do that, we are going to write a test or a test setup. So I'm just going to define a method which I'm going to call setup. And what this method does is to basically run each time our test is going to start to run. Now in this case, we need to create some post objects that are going to appear on our home page. So to do that, I'm just going to come right here and all I have to do is to basically create some objects. Now, I'm just going to come here and all I have to do is to say, uh, that we're going to have our posts so let's just come and say that we're going to have our post one or let's say we're going to just call the post dot objects dot create 
and then here we shall basically go ahead and maybe create a title so this title is going to be equal to a sample post one and then we can also have a body so in this case uh, our body is going to be equal to uh, we have very long lorem ipsum text but i'm going to get rid of it so to remain with just a few lines of text i'll just come and highlight this and remove some of that so that you have some reasonable text and now this is going to be our body so once you have that then we've been able to create a test so i may maybe create two tests so i've been say post object to create so that's going to be sample test one and this will also be sample test two now once we have this then we can go ahead and first test our home page so i'm just going to come here and write our first test for our home page so what this is going to do what it's going to do is to actually check if one of these posts or if our home page actually returns the appropriate template so to do that we're going to basically come here and define that method as test uh, home page uh, returns uh, correct response or something like that so i'm just going to say returns correct uh, response and once we do that it's going to take in self now once we take in self now just basically come and create uh so i'm just going to come and basically create a response object just like we did for actually having yet created the response object so what happens in uh, testing views and templates is basically we create a response object using our client so the Django unit test class allows us to basically be able to do that it helps us to create a client that it provides for us a client that we can use to carry out requests to various URLs and then return appropriate responses with all information about those responses. So the way we're going to do that is by basically coming here. So we're going to create a response object and this is going to be derived from the client class that comes within our test, our unit, our, our Django test framework. So I'll just come and say, self dot and in this case we shall call our client object and then on this client object we can call http methods such as gate post and so on so in this case we're going to call the gate method now sorry for this so within this gate method we have to call our we have to provide our url so in this case our url is going to be our home page or our root url and right after doing that thing, the next thing is going to be to assert if this page exists and it renders us the exact template that we want it to render. So to do that, I'll just come and say self dot assert. And in this case, we're going to assert if our template used is going to be our index.html within our posts folder. So to do that, I'll just pass in the response object and then passing the template name so in this case it's going to be our posts slash uh, this is going to be our index dot html so once we have this we can also assert for the status code that's being written so we can just do something like self dot assert equal and then we can check for the appropriate status code so in this case we can maybe say one check if the response status code so we can check this by referring to response to status code and then we basically uh, map or basically check and compare it with the status code of 200 because if it takes this of course we get the status code of 200 now just basically go up and i'm going to use an inbuilt library or an inbuilt package to allow us access http statuses and this is the http status HTTP status package given within Python. So I'll have to import it by saying from HTTP, we are going to import our HTTP status class. And once you have this status class, we can basically access all the HTTP statuses that we need. So in this case, we can maybe just say start something like HTTP status dot, and then you access the status code. So in this case, we want the OK status code. Now let's try to run our test and make this fail. So when I pull up the terminal, I'm going to first exit this 
then I'll basically terminate that so let's go ahead and run our test so when you run our test in this case we of course expect it to fail so we see that we don't have any templates for this response so if we want to render templates then we need to set up Django to allow to allow us to be able to render our templates so the first thing we're going to do is to head over to our settings with py so i'm going to head over to our settings with py because i'm going to organize these templates to be within a root folder within our project so i'm just going to come within our settings with py and then we shall look for the setting that is very specific to our templates so that is within our templates this right here now we're going to look at this dars key and it has an empty list as the value now this is basically referring to where we want to place our templates now if we refer if we tell this that we want to actually place them in a certain folder it will go ahead and look for that folder and then look for the templates that are stored within that exact location so what we want is to put all our templates within a single folder the way i'm going to do that is by basically coming and calling this base that variable which is basically referring to the root of our project folder just like we have here so let me try to show you so what you want to do is to create our templates folder within our root so we're going to use this base that variable right here and then we are going to basically point to the templates folder that will exist in there so the way we're going to do that is by coming right here within our dash and then i'll say this is going to be this dar and it will be this dash slash then in this case we shall basically provide our templates folder so when i save i'm uh, hoping that our server is still running our server is not actually running or it may be so i'm basically checking here and I uh, hope it's still running. It's running. We don't have any issues. So let's go ahead and create our templates folder. So I'm just going to come and say new folder. So it's going to be templates. And once we have this templates folder, I'm going to create our index.html. Now say new files. So this is going to be our posts. Or did we call it our posts? What did we call it? We called it our sorry for this this is going to be posts index.html so let's go ahead and basically rename this to posts and then dot html or post slash index.html and say enter so it seems like we cannot move or copy that so I'm just basically going to remove that message remove this file so it's going to be a file so going to rename this to our post or let me just remove that specific post file and once i've deleted that then the next thing is going to be to create a new folder which i'm going to call posts and then within our post folder i am going to go ahead and create a file so this file is going to be our index.html file so i'll just come and say index.html and once I've done that, then the next thing is going to be to actually write some HTML in here. So I'll just come and maybe create some HTML. Now I'll just say uh, it's going to have an H1, and this is going to be a welcome to the blog. So once I save, then our server is going to be running. So let's try to run our tests again. So in run our tests, I'm going to write to basically go to our terminal right here and then I'm going to run our python money.py test so this is going to basically run our tests so we are still getting the same error because we haven't yet created the view and the URL for rendering this template so to do that we're going to go ahead and visit our views.py still within our post app then we're going to create our first view so a view is a function that basically takes in an http request and then returns an http response so when testing our application what we have is we are making a request to that url of returning our index.html but we do not have a view to basically help us do that now let's go ahead and define one so let's going to come here and say def let's call this index and it's going to be the view function so this taking a request and 
once they have this request then they return an appropriate response so in this case we want to render an html page so we're going to do that by coming right here and saying return and then we shall say render so this takes in the request and also takes in the html template to be rendered so in this case we shall just come and say render request and then we return the html so in this case this is going to be post slash index dot html so once you have this then the next thing is going to actually be uh, basically creating the url that's going to map onto this view function so i'm going to create a urls.py module so i'm just going to come and say urls.py and once you have that then the next thing is actually going to be to uh the next thing for the next thing is going to be to import our path function that's going to allow us to map that specific view function onto a url so i'm just going to come and say from dot in this case we're going to first import our view so i'll just say from dot import our views so that we access our view function and then right after doing that then the next thing is actually going to be to <coughs> to basically create a list of url patterns so i'm just going to come and say url patterns now if you're wondering how i'm getting these auto completions i'm actually using a tool called janeiro let me write the spelling right here so it's called janeiro and what it does is to allow me have auto completion specific to Django and Jinja to syntax. So it's a very awesome tool. Now, once I've done this thing, the next thing is actually going to be to go ahead and define our URL pattern. So I'm going to use the path function. Just going to come and say uh, from Django URLs, we are going to import our path function. And once you've imported it, I'm just going to come right here and all I'll do is to just say path. And in this case, we're going to define the route, which is going to be our root URL. Now we shall also define our view function, which is going to be views. Dot. In this case, we shall access the index uh, function. And then we can also provide for this in name. So we are going to call this our home page. And once we have this now, we've been able to define these URL patterns, but they are not known globally within our project. So if we want this to be known within our project, then we have to go within our settings.py in our main project folder, and then that's going to be within our URLs.py, and then register our, <coughs> our app specific URLs. Now in this case, it's going to be path, and then we shall have the rich URL comma then you provide our views so the way basically import these urls and attach them to our project is by using the include method so i'm going to include it here i'm going to import include it's actually include and then i just come right here and say we're going to include our post urls now I refer to the name of the app which is posts dot urls and then I basically go ahead and save so hoping that our server is still running when you check it's still running so let's try to run this test and see if it will pass now we're going to run this and in this case we actually see that our post is our request is running meaning that our home page is being returned and it's being re it's returning the right response now we're going to also test the results that will be returned on our home page